Hey investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and today I'm going to talk about how to live and eat well on only $20 a week or $80 a month or $960 a year, which is not even $1,000. And in this minimalist approach to food, I'd like to share some of my best practices and that I look for food items that are on sale and that are easy to make and save me time in the way that doesn't take a lot of time to make the food items and then I could also eat some of these foods several days in a row so that I don't have to spend a lot of time preparing every day if I make some of the food ahead of time. And your approach to food should be all about trying to figure out what kinds of food you enjoy eating and which foods you could eat for many days at a time if you need to in order to save money. And there's no one size fits all. Sometimes we can't always stick to a strict budget of only something like $20 a week. But if you come to know what foods are generally your go-tos, you can quickly find that coming up with a month's worth of sustenance isn't too hard. So hope you enjoy some of the tips I'm about to share in this video. I'd love to hear from you in a comment about what's your favorite food and where do you enjoy food shopping? In my case, my favorite food is bread. I could eat pretty much all the kinds of bread all the time. And my favorite store that sells food happens to be Costco. So I'd love if you could also please like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel. And I hope you enjoy this content. Thanks. Another best practice I advocate for is to look for foods that you perceive to be healthy for you and that you enjoy and that are affordable because the way you stretch your dollar the furthest when it comes to food is to buy foods that you can envision eating all of it and not something that if you buy the cheapest version of it, you might resent it because maybe it's a little bit more stale or it's not as healthy for you and you'll feel some of those physical effects if you eat enough of foods that are not as good for you as other kinds of foods that might be multigrain or that have enough vitamin A and C and have enough omega-3 fatty acids. So those are the kinds of things that I try to look out for, as well as foods that are ideally organic or sustainably caught like fish and are also wild caught. And also when it comes to beef that are grass fed ideally. So these are all kinds of factors that I think can make our food dollar stretch the furthest. I'll take you through the foods that generally last me a month and how much I pay for them and how many servings I generally get out of these foods. And I'll talk you through them in the order of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and each of their monetary value amounts and how it adds up to just under $80 in a month. When I go food shopping, I try to plan ahead and buy in bulk and buy items that last a while or last long enough that I can eat them before they expire. And for breakfast, they include the essentials for me, coffee, milk, and cereal. And in my case, when I'm at Costco, I'll buy this Starbucks two and a half pound bag of coffee that happened to be on sale for $14. So over the course of a month, if I go through half of this, that's basically worth about $7 only for a whole month's worth of coffee, which is like 23 cents a day. And then when it comes to milk, I happen to buy slightly more expensive milk called Parmalat because for a quart, it actually is long shelf life, kind of like Yoohoo chocolate milk. So a similar concept in a carton. And that means I don't have to run out every week to buy milk. And if I buy four quarts, which is a gallon, that lasts me for a whole month for both coffee and cereal. And I'm pretty content with that. And then it only costs $2 a carton and the other thing I like to have is milk with my cereal. And for this, I'll buy a pound and two ounce worth of Cheerios, let's say, with its whole grain oats. And this can last for a month in that it's a family size. So again, an item in bulk and that lasts a while and that I'm pretty good with because I don't have high dietary needs during breakfast time. And this Cheerios only costs $3.69 for this one pound and two ounces. For lunch, I can get by eating two types of meals over the course of a month. And they're either a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a chicken wrap. And I source all of these items from either Costco, Trader Joe's, 
my local grocery store ShopRite or farmer's markets. And the first one with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I can buy two loaves of sliced bread that are 15 grain or multi-grain and it's $4.89 for three pounds of bread, which lasts me for 14 sandwiches worth. So I know that's a mouthful. And then moving on to peanut butter and jam. So let's say taking peanut butter from Trader Joe's, that's $2.99 for a pound, and then also similar, a pound of jam, and that's about $2.50 from a grocery store. And for the rest of the month's lunches, I'll make a chicken wrap, which I first discovered as a buffalo chicken wrap in college, and I fell in love with it with the addition of hot sauce, so that's pretty non-negotiable for me, is to have some spice in my life. And when I make my chicken wraps, I start out with buying six wraps that cost $1.59, so I'll buy four sets of these over the course of a month, and some of which I also use for dinner. And then I also buy some cheese, so eight ounces of cheddar for $2, and that lasts for the month. And then I'll also buy three pounds of chicken tenders, or also known as tendies in the galaxy of the internets. And this costs $8.50 when it's on sale at Costco. So that's a steal in my opinion. And then I also throw onto that some salad and I buy a pound of spring mix salad, which is $3.99. And I buy two containers of this over the course of a month. And finally, I throw on some Cholula hot sauce, such as this Chipotle flavor, and this costs $2.25 at my grocery store. So between all of these ingredients, I happen to enjoy some chicken wraps throughout the month, and I personally enjoy eating wraps, so it's just a good time. For dinner, I'll stick to three things, spaghetti and tomato sauce, sardines and beans on a wrap, and spicy ramen noodles. So for the spaghetti and sauce, the tomato sauce jar will be 24 ounces for 99 cents and I'll buy two of these. And then I'll also buy two boxes of a pound of spaghetti. So two boxes of that times 88 cents. And then this will last me about 14 dinners. And then moving on to sardines, I can buy this on sale at Costco for $7 for six cans of sardines. And this contains 1.7 grams of omega-3 fatty acids, the good kinds that you want in your diet. And apparently it's recommended that for women, 1.1 grams and for men, 1.6 grams of omega-3 fatty acids in their diets. And then when it comes to the beans, this will be 55 cents. So I'll buy two cans of this as well. And then when it comes to some of the ingredients that I saute and add in, I might either put carrots into my tomato sauce and or in a sauteed mix with the sardines and beans and carrots will be about $1.50 for a bunch of carrots and also throw in some garlic for $1.50 of some cloves of garlic and I'll also buy some onions for $2 so between all of these things they should last a month. Most of the veggies that I also buy in this I've sourced from a farmer's market so it's ultimately the cheapest, but it might not be the most natural. So I'm hopeful that it is without as much pesticides, but when you're trying to eat inexpensively, farmer's markets are a great source of inexpensive foods. And then for the spicy ramen noodles, I'll buy about five or six of these for $5 or so from a Korean grocery store because I find it most delicious when I eat the spicy kind of ramen. I know you could get much cheaper kinds of ramen from your everyday grocery store, but I happen to try to only eat the spicy kind. When we tally all of these 19 items, they add up to exactly $78. So I could even end the year with only spending $936 for all of these foods if I wanted to live on only these for a whole year. And fortunately, I try to mix up my life and as an omnivore, I have the freedom and I'm lucky that I don't have any dietary restrictions. So I do try to expand my world as to what foods I eat. And also, you didn't think we'd get through a whole millennial video without me mentioning avocado toast, did you? And with avocados, I tend to buy those so I include them in my wraps typically. But 
if I so wanted to swap out one of my peanut butter and jelly and instead have avocado toast, I could still do that and still be within the $80 a month budget. But then if I wanted to make my eating dinner a little bit more interesting with spaghetti and sauce, I can make it a meat sauce by buying some $6 for a pound of Trader Joe's Angus grass-fed beef and that would put my budget way over the $80 and it would put it at $85. So I'd end the year with spending $1,023 if I had $6 of ground beef a month and that would be okay, it wouldn't be too terrible because it's also good to have varied sources of protein. So that's kind of just other things that would make me tally my total food count items to 21. If I also include, and I'm feeling luxurious, the avocado and beef. And then after watching a video about all this food, you must be wanting to quench your thirst with something. And I'll tell you what I drink with all of this food is just tap water and I know that that might not be the most appealing because a lot of people enjoy having some flavor to their water and if I'm feeling like I wanna have something besides water, I'll probably have some tea, but I try to stay away from anything with added sugar to it and that helps keep me in a pretty good shape. And the other suggestions I'd have for items to substitute in for some of these food items that don't cost a lot and last a long time. Instead of Cheerio cereal, I might have muesli or if I wanna swap in some lunch and dinner items, I could buy a whole pizza pie for let's say $10 at a takeout and I'll buy $2 of pepperoni that's sliced already from my local grocery store. So for $12, I could have eight meals of pizza at $1.50 for each slice when I have that over the course of eight days and then I could also swap in some tuna fish cans and that's pretty cheap, usually at 88 cents to a dollar. Or I could also do Trader Joe's burritos. So that's usually about two burritos in a pack for $2.50 or $1.25 each. And then there's also, if you want, you could sub in rice and quinoa. I didn't in this video example, but I know that those are also great items to buy in bulk and can last you a long time. And I happen to buy foods that I really like in this video. You could easily swap out for less expensive versions of what I got for uh, savings of 15 to $20 a month. And you could get your yearly bill down to something like only $720 for a whole year. So those are some ways that I try to be cost effective when I'm trying to eat foods over the course of a month. And I hope you were able to learn and get something out of this video too. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. And I hope to hear from you about what your favorite foods were and what stores you like to shop at. Until next time.